the Samaritans, this is an issue near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> and I have to credit uh, Daniel Hopkins for uh, causing me to speak, because he calls the Samaritans polytheistic. Um, this is something that I disagree with, and I'd like to say I don't know where it comes from, but um, fortunately or unfortunately, either way, I do. Um, it's you can see in the book, the book of Second Kings, chapter seventeen, it claims that the inhabitants of the north. Uh, the Israel, because kingdoms were divided after Solomon. The Solomon, David and Solomon were such wise and merciful kings that, you know, it's just a mystery why the northern tribes would screw you and broke off. But that's not the way it's painted in the, uh, in the books of kings. Um, of course, I'm being sarcastic when I'm saying anything positive about Solomon or David. Well, the Kings, the propaganda that I don't know where I don't think anybody knows if it was Hezekiah or Josiah. I suspect it's one of those two that had their hand in this. Um, that the northern Israel or Israel or the northern tribes were the land was emptied and it was filled back up with Assyrians. The earth claims uh, at the beginning. Of their of living there, they did not fear the Lord, and the Lord sent lions among them and killed some of them. So they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, "The nations from whom you've carried off into exile, cities of Samaria, do not know the custom of the God of the land." So he sent lions. Then the king of Samaria commanded, saying, "Take one of the priests whom you carried away into exile and let them live there and teach them the custom, the God of the land." And then goes down and contradicts itself and said, but every ma every nation still made gods and put them in the houses in the high places, which the people of Samaria made every nation in their cities and they lived there, you know. And the, the king of the Syria is uh, Sennacherib. And says, they feared the Lord and served their own gods according to the customs of the nations whom they had been carried away into exile. Yeah, uh, this is a slander against the, uh, the, the Israelites of the north. Uh, the Jews are the only pure people, and the Samaritans, well, they're not even descended from Israel. They're, they're this half mix, this blend, or they're not even, you know, the, this is where the lost tribe to Israel comes in, and all this stuff that you know, this is the propaganda of the South, speaking against the North. The South always bashes the North. Um, and even when the restoration of the Temple comes, you know, when the Jews are going to rebuild the Temple, the Northern Israelites, Samaritans, say, yeah, let us help. And they go, nope, you're not allowed to. Well, it's usually it's kind of like Scientology when Scientologists say, you know, we're for freedom of religion, we're against, you know, uh, enslavement and mental abuse. That's the exact thing that they do, you know, or, you know, uh, the Moonies, we're for family, you know, we're against breaking up families, and that's the exact thing that they do. Uh, the Jews are blended by their own account, you know, they, they had mixed marriages and children of you know, you know, they took Babylonian wives. Not to mention that they were speaking Aramaic, the language of Babylon, um, by the still in the first century. Uh, and that we, if you look at the the houses of the Pharisees that they uncovered, your archaeology, they're very Grecianized, you know, Greco Babylonian, you know. Uh, so instead of calling them, you know, Israel, they're Samaritans, you know, those people, ugh. you know, the, the, the slanders are so many, again, like anybody, like, you know, in, you know, like the fourth century, well, they're Gnostic, they're Aryan, they're, 
pagan, they're Jewish, they're Marcionite, they're but you know it, it too many too many epithets and slander they they would cancel each other out they would you know they can't all be true you know they worship the lord yet they worship other gods too okay um but there is a light there is some positive in here ezekiel actually chastises uh the people, you know, when they're enslaving and, you know, the, the egg, when the exiles return and they're just brutal against the people in this land, you know, and we know that <coughs> the people who were carried away were people who could write and craftsmen and anybody who could contribute, you know, so the, those in exile, actually the Jews in Babylon were treated well. The one thing they were pissed off about is that there was not like a Taliban like civilization like man people are free to worship other gods that's horrible they can live according to their own customs and don't have to submit to the mosaic law that's tough this horrible oppression we're being oppressed because we have to live around other people who we can't you know kill for what we see as witchcraft uh, northern Israelite. I think he was Samaritan to the core. I don't think he had any birthplace or anything in the South. Oh wait, that was just, that wasn't me, that was a demon that came into me that said that. And I fully agree with everything in the Bible. Um, no, the... It's... The Samaritans get slammed for having, you know, being pagan or heretics or whatever when their name comes from either the, the watchers of the mountain or those who keep the law or I've heard a few things uh, and I think there's a play on words that the, the Jews have it, it, I think it also means something negative uh, just like uh, Joshua means you know the Lord saves but Yeshu means may his name be blotted out. So Yeshua, Yeshu, there's that, you know, in the Talmud, there's that play on uh, the words there. And there's a lot of play on words in uh, the Torah itself. Well, what do the Samaritans have? They have the Pentateuch. They have the first five books of Moses. Apparently, their Ten Commandments have 11 commandments, you know, keeping Mount Gerizim. <clears throat> But they don't have any of the Kabbalistic stuff, none of the Kabbalah stuff where they're actually Metatron and there's this and there's that. And it all looks either very pagan or very Gnostic and it's added to, I mean, even the rabbinical law, the, the, the oral law that Moses passed down, you know, from orally that wasn't written, even though there's, it won't get written until... Um, just before the rise of Islam uh, and the Sadducees even criticized the you know the Pharisees for doing this uh, but modern Judaism comes out of Pharisees this is where rabbinic Judaism comes from uh, so these the Samaritans you know blending with paganism really they stuck to the Pentateuch. They actually continue with sacrifices and stuff like this. Uh, there was no temple. There was the tabernacle commanded by Moses. So uh, it doesn't really. The Jews keep saying, "Well, they corrupted everything. They, they, uh, they're not even, you know, they're blended with them, or they're just straight up Assyrians, and they're not even." descendants of northern Israel uh, or uh, they added things 
really? <laughs> I kind of didn't. And they've practiced this to their their expense. They've there's only about what 300 of them left around non Garazim. Now we know Moses didn't set foot on Moriah or Zion, and that's that's another interesting thing. The ancient hymns talk about Zion. So where does David put his put his palace? He puts his palace on Zion, and he puts the temple on Moriah. Why would he do that? Maybe because he, you know, worked for the Philistines for a long time, and they had god kings. And maybe he could become the new god king. Maybe, you know, like Chemosh. Chemosh was an actual god. Then became a god. So, the slander against the Samaritans, I'm not saying Hopkins slanders them, it just picks this up from people, but I have a very critical view of the Torah, and I don't mean I dislike it, um, and especially of, uh, of the books of Kings and Chronicles. Chronicles is outright southern. Um, Kings, you can see where, you know, David did all this evil shit, and then, whoop, but it's okay, but Solomon, or Saul does a procedural error, and he's out. And even this, these high places, and oh, they worship the Nahashtun. Well, Hezekiah smashed, had the, the Nahashtun, the bronze serpent, smashed because it was a symbol of Moses. Because the Mushites, the, the northern priests, were from Moses. So we have to write in, hey, no, no priest, oh, it's only Aaron. And no other, you know, we're going to segregate, you know, Levites and and priests and, you know, so we can have the center of power be in the south. And even after all this, the Samaritans said, we'll still help you rebuild your temple. And you know what? You're our brother. Nope. And then even to this day, the Samaritans recognize Jews as being, hey, you're from the southern tribe. Do the... Jews recognize the Samaritans as northern Israelites? Nope, they're the worst. You know, it's um, the Samaritans really got the shaft. And it's a sad, and now they're dying off. Um, so it's, uh, I really dig that, you know, Christ had a positive view of Samaritans. Um, and I think that, well, I'm not, not to say that he, had, he had, you know, positive views of not to say that he had, uh, you know, he really boosted them, but I think the parable of the Good Samaritan says a lot. In many ways, the Samaritans are, well, in my view, the Samaritans are actually the true Israel, still there, um, untainted by, you know, additions or whatever now is that the right thing should you, you still be stuck in you know four, three thousand years ago or whatever i'm not going to denigrate another tradition or culture or whatever that's you know, actually valid but uh i don't know there's um the samaritans got the shaft for the last you know three thousand years And the things that the Jews accuse them of being or doing or attribute to them, later on you see the exact same thing happening with the Jews. Maybe it was the the way of being like, oh wait, I know I'm from I'm half Babylonian, half Jewish, and my customs are corrupted, but I don't like the Northerners, so we're just going to blame them and claim that we're pure. It might have been that, and I suspect that's what it was. Uh, and I've always been suspect of David and Solomon. There, you read it and you go, "What, really?" You know, guy, the guy actually worked for the Philistines. He was raiding parties. But uh, yeah, it was it was the the only reason for the, the schism was the, uh, the brutalization of the North by. 
southern imperialist kings, David and Solomon. Solomon actually sold, gave away part of the northern tribes' land to uh, a pagan king. So he could build the greatest temple. Well, you already had a tabernacle. Why do you need a temple? So that's my uh, little rant on the Samaritans. Go Samaritans. But that's not the way it's painted in the uh, in the books of Kings. Um, of course, I'm being sarcastic and I'm saying anything positive about Solomon or David. Well, the Kings, the propaganda that I don't know where I don't think anybody knows if it was Hezekiah or Josiah. I suspect it's one of those two that had their hand in the inhabitants of the north. Uh, the Israel, because kingdoms were divided after Solomon. Because Solomon, David and Solomon were such wise and merciful kings that, you know, it's just a mystery why the northern tribes would screw you and broke off. The Samaritans, this is an issue near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> and I have to credit uh, Daniel Hopkins for uh, causing me to speak because he calls the Samaritans polytheistic. Um, this is something that I disagree with. And I'd like to say oh, I don't know where this comes from, but um, fortunately or unfortunately, either way. I do. Um, it's you can see in the book, the book of Second Kings, chapter seventeen. It claims that the in this, um, that the northern Israel or Israel or the northern tribes were the land was emptied and they was filled back up with Assyrians. And here it claims. Uh, at the beginning of their of living there, they did not fear the Lord, and the Lord sent lions among them and killed.